so kind of when I was looking at the SEC standings this week, like the top five teams, obviously you're playing the top team this week. You've played all the top five now and have won against all of them, but have also lost the series. So kind of how do you balance where you're at with where you want to be or just with kind of the difficult schedule you all have had? I mean, I like this weekend, we played much better Friday night. One and nothing, nine innings. Defense was there, the pitching was there. We were missing the hitting. We get one hit between the first and seventh innings in, at the right time. We win one to nothing. We just didn't do it. The next day, all three areas show up. The hitting was good, the, hit, the pitching was great, the defense was really good. We win the game five to one. Sunday, 0 for three. Didn't have anything. And you know, when you're on the road in the SEC, we've talked about this a thousand times, if you don't show up, you're gonna get your butt beat. So, you know, the Friday night, Beaver pitched a hell of a game. She, you know, and they came through with the key hit in the bottom of the ninth. So, um, and this is, this is like the weirdest year ever with like scores and matchups and, you know, like last night, Sanford beat Mississippi State, who's in the top 20. Um, Florida State put 12 in one inning against Florida, you know. Um, you just, you never know. So hopefully um, we go three for three with the pitching, the defense, and the hitting. Now, they probably, Tennessee probably has the best staff, you know, one-two punch in the SEC. Pretty experienced. Um, so we have to play really good defense and pitch well because I, I don't know if it's going to be a six to five. You know, I could see a three to two or two to one game. So all three areas need to show up. Our RPI is still great. Our strength of schedule is still great, but you, you still got to win some of these. You know, we got to win a series, especially at home. That's been the kicker to me. You know, I don't know if this is an appropriate question or not. Uh, if you could pick one player to get one superlative skill, would it be a pitcher or would it be a position player? Hmm. Position slash hitter. Well, what we're probably lacking is that clutch RBI person. Just anytime there's a runner at second, second and third, base is loaded, they get a hit. And that's gonna win you a lot of games. Because if you get a double with the bases loaded, you probably clear them. So, or a grand slam. So she can affect a game a lot. Obviously the pitcher, you know, she can control a good offense because Beaver's been doing that. Brisky did that, you know, two weeks in a row. She's been great as a freshman. Uh, Jayla's shown it. You know, Ailey's come in and done great things. But probably right now, and it's the toughest thing. I don't know if you can teach it. It's got to come from within. You got to be competitive. You got to be gritty. You got to talk yourself into it, you know, um, to be a good hitter. Because the mindset is you fail six out of 10, you come through four, but you still got to tell yourself, damn, I'm good. I'm good. And you have to talk yourself into those six at bats. That was just the pitcher got lucky, you know? So it's a tough skill. Baseball, softball, doesn't matter, you know, because um, once you get in your head, it's tough to get out of it. I know when uh, she initially went out, it was kind of a two to four week prognosis for Marley, just how she kind of progressing in her injury. Let's see, what is this now? Was that Kentucky she got hurt? Yeah, is it the fourth week? Third or fourth, I think. Yeah. Um, still, you know, don't probably won't play this weekend. Um, so hopefully she'll be back for postseason. Esmond's getting better, hitting more. She's probably not going to pitch this year. Um, who else is there? That's about it. Um, you, you talked about people needing, or somebody having to be that clutch RBI person. We've seen Jenna get some big hits the last couple weeks. Um, Kind of, how are you figuring out where to put her in the lineup? Like, it seems like when she's been in the leadoff, she hasn't been getting <laughs> I know. this many hits. So, kind of, how are you trying to figure out that lineup right now? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, probably more matchups than anything. What does the other team, what are they going to throw? 
versus who do we have? So lefty, righty, righty, lefty, whatever. Um, you know, we guessed right Saturday night. They threw a lefty. I put eight righties in the lineup and Kinley Cahalen. You know, and she got a double at the end of the game. So sometimes uh, it works. But, um, you know, and it also depends on what everybody else is doing. Because if somebody is hot and we want them on base, who's going to drive them in? Like, Kinley has been hitting great and she's been getting on, but has she been getting up with anybody on base? That's the thing going in my head now. Like, she should be hitting third, but then who's going to be first and second to get on for her? Because right. that's what was happening before. Yeah. She'd get up second with nobody on. So then it would, she'd be like the leadoff with one out. So everybody's just got to do their job. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about a lineup, you're, you're talking about you're one out of nine and you do one ninth of the job because there's nine people, right? There's nine pieces of the pie sitting right there. You only have to do your job. You don't have to do yours and yours. You don't have to do three jobs. You don't have to do four. It's only one. So one out of nine, do what you're supposed to do at that time in the game. Because, you know, when you lead off, you're only leading off once. That's to start the game. And I've tried to tell ours over the years, it's only once. You're the true leadoff only once. After that, it's just luck of the draw where you end up. Um, just since we're talking to Kendall today, what have you seen from her this year and how quickly she's been able to, like, I would assume, I don't know, but it's a pretty big jump going from Juco yes. to the SEC. So how she's been able to kind of adjust this season? Well, number one, she's probably one of the hardest workers on the team. She's one of the mentally strongest on the team. I can remember standing out here in the middle of July, hotter than hell, she gets to go with us to Italy, and we were hitting. And this is the absolute God honest truth. She was using about this much of the field to hit a ball, which is right down the left field line. And it was pull, 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 pull. We call it a DPH, a dead pull hitter. So I finally called time and I said, Kendall, you know you have like all this grass out here, this whole field, you can hit the ball fair in, you know? And she kind of laughed and I think realized what I was talking about and just constantly has worked. Adam has done a great job with her. Uh, Michelle Diltz absolutely loves her in the weight room. Um, she's got the tools and you're right. It's, you know, you go from Juco to SEC pitching. That's a big jump. But one of the coolest moments of the whole summer was she hit a double in the opposite field gap against Italy, which I don't know if that was, I didn't even know if that was possible, but she did. And she's done it several times this year. So um, she's just going to get better and better and better. And it's been fun to watch her progress because she's a great young lady.